At the 2012 SIAM annual meeting, British Antarctic survey oceanographer Dr. Emily Shuckborough discussed how mathematics is being applied to model the dynamics of ocean circulations and leading to advances in climate modeling. So I was talking today about how to use mathematical techniques to better understand key processes in the ocean. And the particular thing that we're interested in trying to understand is the amount of mixing in the ocean. And the reason that that is important is because the ocean circulation works by deep, deep ocean circulation, comes up to the surface. When it comes to the surface, it's able to exchange heat and carbon dioxide outside with the atmosphere. We believe that that circulation is partly driven by the amount of mixing in the ocean. So changes to the amount of mixing would change how much carbon dioxide was taken from the atmosphere and stored in the, in the deep ocean. So when you're wanting to understand the atmosphere of the ocean, the key thing from a physics perspective is that they're both rotating stratified flows. And you can very easily write down the set of governing equations. It's essentially Newton's second law. So what you have is you have um, the acceleration is related to various um, force terms. We've been considering the ocean flow to be essentially a dynamical system and um, from that we've been using techniques, for example, um, looking at the stable and unstable manifolds um, associated with the flow to characterise the amount of mixing and transport. And, and one of the things that we've been doing, which is a lot of fun, is actually trying to estimate those stable and unstable manifolds um, from satellite data that tells us about the surface currents in the ocean. And then we've been going into the real ocean, putting floats in particularly targeted positions close to what we estimate to be the hyperbolic points in the flow and watching how they've been um, evolving along the unstable manifolds and using that information actually to validate the satellite data to see whether or not it's giving an accurate picture of the surface currents. You know, one important aspect here is that we're applying these mathematical ideas well outside the bounds of which they're strictly rigorous but uh, nevertheless they do seem to have and being able to give us significant insight. Ocean processes are most important on the longer time scales. Um, so ocean, the ocean will play less of a role in determining tomorrow's weather, but it plays a larger role if you're talking about the weather evolving over a season or over years, and certainly over a climate time scale of decades to centuries.